Okay, in today's video we're going to change something that's called a clock spring. It's a kind of switch electronic device that's in the steering column and what it does is allows the airbag to connect to the computer system of the car. Also, if you have any radio controls, cruise controls that might be on the steering wheel, they all get connected to the car through the clock spring. And what it does is allows the steering wheel and those switches to turn freely while staying in contact with the rest of the vehicle. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'll show you the uh, part. So if you have a no airbag or an airbag light lighting up, or maybe your cruise control or radio switches on the steering wheel are not working anymore, some of them working, work intermittently, it possibly could be the clock spring. So let's take a look at the part and then we'll get around to changing it. First thing I'm going to do though is disconnect the battery to make sure that we don't have any kind of accidental airbag uh, mishap. All right, so let's take a look at the car real quick. This is what the clock spring looks like. So it gives you some idea. There's some electrical connections. And I assume, and here's some more electrical connections that it would be free spinning, but oh, you gotta pull out the lock, I guess, but we'll deal with all that once we uh, get in there. First step is we need to remove some of the switches and get the steering wheel off. So here we can see the cruise control switches, the radio switches are on the back. We're not that concerned with those, but there's some Torx screws that has to be removed. from each side of the steering wheel. That's going to allow us to pull the switch away. I'm not sure if you can see there, but there's another torque screw. Let's see if I can zoom in. That torque screw right there is going to remove the airbag assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and get the screw out from the other side switch and then I'll remove those uh, screws. All right, with the other side, switch out of the way. I'm gonna remove these larger torque screws. Now, hopefully our Airbag assembly is loose. The very top there, you can see that little yellow plug. We're gonna kind of gently undo that. Let me get a little screwdriver. Okay, so with a small screwdriver, I'm gonna gently release this plug. And there are multiple plugs. One on top right here too. Okay. So now our airbag is removed. And we can see the clock spring underneath. Probably go ahead and remove the other plugs. Okay, now I position the steering wheel kind of straight so that when I put it back together, hopefully uh, everything will be straight. So it's roughly straight. And I'm noting the location. In fact, I'm going to go ahead right now and snap a quick photo. Of the way everything looks here. Not that I think I'm gonna have any problems, but I just wanna be safe. Now, most likely I'm gonna need 
a steering wheel puller to get the steering wheel off. You can get lucky, but not today. Okay, now that we have the steering wheel puller tool, and this is what it's gonna look like set up finally. Let me turn the camera and make sure it can All right, there you go. We are gonna put this steering wheel screw back in. And what this is gonna do is allow us to allow us to utilize this screw as a pressure point as opposed to the thread and do any damage to it so so yeah in case you're wondering most steering wheels are conveniently produced with threaded areas for this tool facilitate the removal. If by some chance you come across one that's not threaded, you'll have to use a different style puller, uh, like a gear or harmonic balance type puller that uses forks. Now you want to kind of have these screwed in about the same amount. And there, that's ultimately what we're looking at. It's 5 8 Both these ratchets give us about the same pulling power. Yeah, and believe it or not, that is all there is to it. If all went well, this should just pop right off. And there we go. Steering wheel removed. Put that out of the way. Now we have a clear view of the switch we're going to be replacing, the clock spring. But as you can tell, we still can't quite access it for removal. So, looks like we will have to figure out how to get the rest of this cover off. And that'll be the next step. All right, looks like there's a couple of Torx screws underneath. We'll see if we can get those off. Those screws look a little different than the other ones on the steering wheel, so we don't want to mix them up. Okay, so apparently the steering lever on this one doesn't have any kind of set screw, it pulls off. I don't think any damage was done, but that was kind of creepy. I'd imagine you were supposed to push in into this square hole to release it, but I ended up getting it off. And it doesn't appear to be damaged. And so now, 
Hopefully. Looks like it has to be from the steering column. And there we go. Bottom cover gone, and we now have fully exposed the clock spring. Almost there, guys. All right, here we go. Removal of the clock spring. I have to tell you, just on a side note, I really love the engineer's creativity when it comes to the use of certain fasteners. I mean, we could go with all Torx or square bit, all flat heads, all Phillips, but no, we're gonna go ahead and use just a random combination of any possible type of fastener. All right, looks like the cables are holding me in. Well, I'm trying to just push and release, but not exactly. Oh, that one's from behind. <laughs> okay. All right, there we go. One old clock spring. All right, to give you a little background on this problem, Originally, my cruise control went out. And it worked kind of intermittently. And I replaced the cruise control switch. You can see that on another video. And it kind of worked a little better for a while, but eventually it went out. And I think there was actually a comment on the uh, video that it was possibly the clock spring. So that's why we're here where we are today but what kind of made this a a uh, necessary job was that now the airbag was losing contact with the computer and giving me an airbag light and initially when that happened of course as anyone I was a little scared that the airbag was gonna blow up in my face I later found out or read that that's not possible um, what it's telling you is that the airbag will not blow up in your face. That's the whole problem. Uh, it's lost contact with the car, so it can't trigger. All right, I've made my connections at the bottom. I've kind of put this back in the position where it was, because I believe that there's a blinker lever there. There's some kind of lever. It has to be hooked up. Um, roughly in the same area I almost feel like maybe I should leave that in a little bit longer all right new clock spring then is engaged there is a new wire here and I believe we're probably gonna go ahead and use the new wire since they provided it let me move some of this out of the way all right now reverse order installation we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the bottom making sure the ignition switch is lining up our lever over here is lining up and our rubber boot for the shifter is also lining up correctly and that looks like that's gonna work although I'm gonna leave that off until we're finished next part we took off was the top I probably should have baby wiped cleaned all this but it's a truck. All right, that seemed a little bit more crazy to put on there, but it appears it's all snapped in place. We just have to put our torque screws back to get everything tight. Let's see if we can get our bottom screws back in. Since this is plastic, as I always say, you're better off doing it a little bit loose rather than doing it tight. And the last one was a silver one, it was a little different. And for a change, all three of them went in 
nice and easy, no problems. All right, looks like we're about ready to reattach our steering wheel. And I believe I'm gonna remove this temporary holder now. That looks like, <laughs> sort of like what it looked like when we started. And the steering wheel was almost straight, which it is again. Just slightly tilted towards me, so I'm very confident that we are in the right spot. Now it's kind of a misconception because of how hard it is to take the steering wheel off. People think they have to really tighten this back on but that's not really the case, you just have to tighten it. What happens is it gets kind of compressed on those splines and it makes it hard to take it off, but you, it just, I mean, obviously you want it tight, but just don't end up stripping it. And that's sufficient right there. We don't have too much more to do. Go ahead and reattach these plugs. And they appear to only be able to go one way. Alright, looks good so far. Now we're at the scary part, right? I have to tell you, I'm not liking the fit. Yeah, you see the old one actually snaps in and locks. Okay, and you know what? I'm gonna make a judgment call here. If you're doing yours, you can do what you like. I'm gonna go ahead and declare that new plug is being defective and go ahead and stick with the old plug which locks in tight sorry guys that's just uh that's my judgment i don't want it slipping out i realize that if it slips out i'll probably get another airbag light but if the wires go bad i should get an airbag light too so it's strictly not a question at this point of which wire is newer but which wire do I think is going to stay in place and last the longest and I'm going to have to go with the old one. Right, one more wire to hook up and I would guess this is the horn wire guess, and there we go alright starting to look almost normal alright we're almost there now Two torque screws. This is where we were. I probably noticed on my videos, I'm always sweating. Well, I gotta tell you, these things, first off, I'm a teacher, so I'm off for the summer. And that's when these projects always seem to take place man it's hot if we didn't hit 100 today i don't know what okay so that's on there switches go back gotta kind of watch they slide into at least they're supposed to slide in There we go, slide in, slide in. All right, it's in, button's moving, looks good. Again, plastic parts, just kind of snug them up.
All right, switches back in. Everything's attached. The only thing left is the tilt mechanism. And that should slide on. Yep, look at that. Okay, that's a wrap. Let me hook the battery up real quick and see if we got a horn. That'll be the first test. Alright, most of the tools are picked up. I'm not sure how much was caught on the other camera because the SD card was full, so I had to switch. And uh, if everything works right, I reconnected the battery. We should have a horn. <laughs> Now, this is all fake, right? Because I already did it. Uh, I'm just not sure if it was recorded. So I know the horn's going to work. And there we go. Now I'm going to take it for a test ride. Up and down the street, we can test the cruise control, the radio, radio controls, and make sure we don't get an airbag light. And then we should be good to go. change the clock spring now everything's working right hopefully that'll be the end of the problems um, so I'm hoping that that helped you out give me a thumbs up if it did uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel that means a lot to me and check out some of the advertisers too they might have something that you need or want so as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time